Oh, what's good, everybody? Here we're back with the Armored Core podcast, and with me today are Moody Data and From Chang. Go ahead and introduce yourselves, guys. Hello. Hi, I'm From Chang. And there you have it. So today on the agenda, we're going to go through um, a number of things. We've got some pretty fun fun stuff to get into today. Uh, up first is going to be Armored Core Six. We're going to be talking about um, mixing that in with what the uh, the devs can do. You know, what what will you want to see from FromSoft? Uh, what's the big deal with single player versus multiplayer, which we want to see more. What are the benefits of that in both Armored Core 6 and now in the community? And uh, then after that, we're going to go into, you know, what the community is, what our demographics are, you know, what our perception of the community is, the uh, content creation, social aspect, and discussions or lack thereof. Now, uh, Chang, do you want to take it away? Yep. So as some of you folks may know, From Software did an announcement, I think, uh like three or four weeks ago, talking about how they wanted to make another Armored Core. And since we're kind of on the topic of that and it's hot in the minds of the community, I think it'd be an interesting topic to go over, you know, just to discuss what we kind of want to see with this new game. You know, the gameplay, story, multiplayer, because there's a lot of things that we're trying to look for, uh, you know, when we're, when we're thinking about another Armored Core game. Something that is new, is interesting, and maybe has a little bit of old to it. Yeah, that's definitely a hot item topic or whatever. <laughs> I mean, you got everybody writing up their their wish lists and stuff and saying, oh, my God, I want this to be this and that to be that. And then you got the naysayers that are going, it's probably going to be some kind of bad abomination of fourth gen meets uh, fifth gen and third gen, and nobody's going to like it and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And nobody's going to want to, you know, change it because it's going to be too different or it's going to be, you know, Bloodborne's core or something. <laughs> I don't know, Moody, do you have anything to say about that? Um, well, the amount of times people have posted up, like you said, just saying basically like, look, I want this, I want that. Everyone's been gunning for this one for a while. I mean, in terms of uh, stuff that I, I personally would want, I just want it to be something completely different from the rest of them just so we can try and get a fresh start on things, you know? See, that's an interesting thing because, I mean, as Cheng will say... Um... People were doing this uh, at the tail end of um, for answer when they were saying, oh, "When's Armored Core Five gonna come out?" You know, I can kind of remember that sort of mindset too, as we were we were all throwing out this this sort of shit storm of ideas, and um, and then we got something that was totally new, and a bunch of the Force Gen guys didn't like it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm wondering, like, because I think in the community at least, um, nostalgia has a huge pull with some of these games, like which, which is why some people like. Some of them hate others, but Shane, what do you think about that? I would say that this is just something that comes about every single time because you kind of saw the same when fourth gen came around, third gen didn't like it, fourth gen came around, fifth gen didn't come to like it. And I think the problem is, is when you play a game like Armored Core, which is very much a different experience and it's very hard to find it in other games, people just are really turned off when it's not exactly how they want it, which is kind of dumb because if you think about it with the way the series has been it's never like that there's always some good and some bad to it like when you think about the change from silent line to nexus or last raven to four and so on and so forth seems like it's really tough to you know hit the nail on the head in terms of getting what people actually want because everybody seems to want something totally different uh, i think that's one of the strong points of from software is that they're very good at bringing very new innovative ideas to the table uh, the problem is, is a lot of times they tend not to execute them very well. And we kind of see that in 5th gen where you see a lot of old concepts, but you also see a lot of brand new ones. You have scan mold, wall jump, you have armor break, the three defense system. But the way they are, they're just, they feel ever so slightly off where they don't take the full potential that they could. I would say maybe it would be interesting to sort of apply what we've seen with the development of the, the Dark Souls series or just the Souls series in general. And maybe figure out what their design choices may implicate in uh, in terms of the next Armored Core game, because I mean, you, I mean, at least Dark Souls Three to me seems like it's just a ton of pandering, <laughs> and you can sort of see remnants of that in Verdict Day, where there's you know we have crashed cradles and you know Mother Will as like a boss for no reason. Because mm -hmm. I guess you can even see it with some of the like the original part designs and some of the weapons. Like there's there's uh, I think the the Ryko head is based off of something from ac2 it's then, uh it's based off i think the i series of heads from ac3 and i don't know what it's called in ac2 but it's basically it's kind of in the same vein basically 
Yeah, and then I noticed um, I don't I don't know what kind of gun they are on um, Last Raven, but there's like some some holdovers that look like the Stracosa. <laughs> but anyway, I guess that's enough of that. What do you guys want to see in Armored Core Six? Let's just I'll give each of you a a quick little segment on you know what's your wish list. Um, in terms of gameplay wise, I want more sort of easy access to the controls. It sounds stupid when I say it like that, but the best way to describe it is it's like when you're on about Dark Souls, then it kind of just give me an idea where with the controls, especially for like me with five, I found switching between scam mode and uh, normal mode just to be a pain in the backside for me. And when you're trying to do that whilst juggling everything else, uh, when you don't play it too much, it just it feels a bit awkward. And I'd love to be able to uh, feel like everything was there without having to kind of grab the control of in like three different ways, you know, to play it. Because um, I've I've played some games where literally you end up crab clawing the controller, where your your hands are kind of in awkward positions, and uh, I, I just don't feel like it's right for an AC game. You want to be playing for uh, as long as you feel like, but without it being awkward. So. I mean, I, I know people that have uh, been switching in and out of scan mode that much that they've actually got a thumb imprint in the controller stick, <laughs> you know. So it, it, it's one of those where, I, in terms of at least from five anyway, for me, I'd like it where the mobility was a very big focus again, but maybe not as fast as four, you know, because like fourth gen, everyone harps on about it being really fast and everything else, but that really from what I can see, it killed quite a lot of variety in terms of gameplay, and it, especially with, like, Lilicon stuff, most of it devolved into basically rifle and rocket spam while strafing. And it, it's just not fun. I, I would like more variety there, but still keep the mobility, but maybe not feel as clunky as 5 for me, because just how I play 5. Now, somebody who obviously plays it differently will... Uh, or, or a lot better will think, well, you know, it's not that clunky, but I think it, that's one thing that turns off more newcomers to five anyway, is just how clunky it feels at first. Um, apart from that, the only other thing I, I would really want in it was a little bit better customization in terms of like paint jobs and emblems and things. I, uh, I remember referencing it a while back and saying it would be good if they had something similar to uh, Forza's level of customization because that is ridiculously good you know in terms of how expansive it is and how easy it is to use compared to uh having to kind of faff around for a couple of hours in the emblem editor and and i know some people are really damn good at it but again that's one of those things where you really want it to be kind of ease of access for people who are newer and coming into it or just being introduced sounds like a pretty solid list I mean, I would object to the the clunkiness, of course, but I think in that vein, um, like the issue with players, just you know, this kind of mobility system is like an entirely new thing for most people. I mean, maybe I'll talk like a little bit about Titanfall here. I'll keep it really short. But I mean, most people who came to play Titanfall came from COD, and wall running isn't a thing in COD. I mean, it is now, but like when you're getting adjusted to a new mobility system, you try to go with like what you are used to doing, which is like normally walking around. And for people in fourth gen, that's holding down the boost button. But when you don't have those like options as like legitimate things that you can do to like get around and you have to rely on things that are new, um, unless the game forces you to learn those, you're not gonna like, you're not gonna learn them. <laughs> and I think the, the story in fifth gen really just didn't do a good job of making you uh, perform mobility wise. But anyhow, that's enough of that. Chang, what's your wish list looking like? I would say I still want it to stay kind of in the fifth gen because obviously I have the bias of that being the gen that I play the most and I like the most. But I think it there's still a lot of potential in the mechanics and the way uh, the game is kind of presented. I think when, it, when we think of Armored Core 5, I know a lot of people t like to say it's cover-based combat, but they have to understand that it's not the same way as the older games. It's it's tangentially similar, I guess you could say, because the wall jumping mechanic uh, just changes how it how it happens, basically. And I think you can kind of understand what I'm saying, Sash, because, you know, 
sure we're jumping in and out of buildings, but at the same time, we're kind of doing, it's not the only thing we're doing and we're not necessarily doing it just to stay in cover. Sometimes it's to recover energy and sometimes it's just, it doesn't feel like it's true cover-based combat, basically. And I would like to see a return to that basically because it's, a lot more interesting it's a lot more tactical and i feel that's where you can offer a lot of variety and kind of leading on to what david said with fourth gen you kind of lost a lot of variety partially because of the speed but also how the maps were designed around it most of them were open and there wasn't a lot of cover there's a few you obviously have the maps like uh like the mother will or the the one with their radar dishes i don't remember but overall Terrible it's growth. What was it called? Parabolic Grove. There we go. Everybody's favorite map ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but overall, you know, I think it's that kind of that kind of orientation and design which has kind of killed a lot of the variety in the games. You know, one of the things I do miss about playing some of the third gen games is the defensive gameplay, the use of ECM, the use of mines, the use of um, the exceed orbit parts and those things of those natures and you kind of lose that overall and i'm hoping that if they do if they do do armor core 6 i want it to be a little more cover based so that you have more things you can work with more different ways you can play than kind of what we've had so far i would really like to see the return of scan mode um i'm not sure about wall jump it's a it's a very interesting and a very cool mechanic but it's very hard to work with because of the fact that it requires so much investment and so much integration with everything else. And so let's see. Like, you, can, you can see it really in the maps where, um, like in, in 5, I think they paid very much attention to it. In Verdict, I think they completely forgot about it. Like you can see with tank ramps, like for every, I think for every map that isn't flat, there's just entire sections of it that can't be accessed by a tank unless right. you have tank legs, you know? Yeah, it's like, like they built the game wall, around wall jumps and then forgot that they were a thing. Exactly, and you know, and it's that kind of thing where it's it causes game problems in the gameplay because it feels very uneven and it feels very unbalanced. Uh, another thing I would probably like to see is them trying to figure out how to revamp single player because one of the problems I have with it is that it tends to be um, I'm not gonna I don't it's partially because it's linear. But it's mainly because it's very predictable. There's a lot of very simple missions, destroy MTs, and then there's also the AC, AC missions, which you kind of see as you kind of progress further on in the games, is that it just kind of gets easier and easier because <clears throat> you're already prepared. You know what to bring. You can just hard counter them from the get-go and have no problems with that. And uh, I remember a lot of the arena fights, for instance, I would just I would bring an LX cannon and just kill everyone at the start point. It's like, okay, nice and simple. Yeah. <laughs> And you That's know, pretty accurate. And it's it's tough to enjoy the game when you have it like that because it's not very interesting and it's not challenging in any way. I I would say that a lot of the missions I enjoyed the most were the multi part missions where let's say there was this one mission in Last Raven where you have to destroy a lot of the Amida bugs in the tunnels. And if you, I believe, if you complete it within a certain amount of time, it would actually give you a second part where you could go to another mission, which happens in another branch, where you basically, I don't remember if you take the airfield or you defend it, but basically oh, it's those kinds of... Oh, I hate that mission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate that mission. <laughs> you know, and it's that kind of, that mix-up, that kind of almost roguelike, maybe not roguelike, but additional element, which kind of makes it interesting because it pushes you farther uh, than, you know, what the other missions do. It's always... I do quite agree with that. Yeah. You know, it's because partially because obviously you don't expect it, but it's it's very... It sort of stops the... the sort of, it, it breaks the mold of, okay, mission done, mission done, mission done. You're, it's more like, okay, I've done this, this, you know, this action, and now, oh shit, you got to go somewhere else, and there's something else that you need to do too. Exactly. Or it you feels know. like maybe, maybe you're progressing towards towards like some kind of fuller objective like that's something that i think that um that uh oh gosh no i think i totally lost my thought there and sorry for interrupting you previously Cenk. 
No worry. That was a, that was a you know good addition to it. But uh, I think it's it's kind of like in the same vein as our occup- occupation of arterial carpals. It's something that really oh, pushes yeah, and they, challenges yeah. you. You know. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> One like, thing that's yeah. something I really like is is freaking challenging gameplay. Like I was I was just playing um, Rainbow Six Vegas two, and goddamn that that Terra something that game is the hardest thing that I ever played. I mean, I would say, to try to put it into context, imagine a, a 2v40 in Armored Core, and that's basically that game. But anyhow, <laughs> oh my gosh, I think, I think uh, Moody, you're going to want to cut in here. Yeah, I was just about to. I was just about show. to say <laughs> that when you, uh, when you think about the levels as well, a lot of them are, are basically rehashes from the earlier games. Mm-hmm. And I don't know whether that is saying something about whether they're referencing it deliberately or whether they've just used all of their ideas really early on <laughs> you know because when you think about it there are in the first three uh, generations um obviously the first one they, they used quite a lot of original ideas and then you go on to the second and third games and you find a lot of similar missions where it's stuff like defend a train until an ac comes that just happens to be red or um, do a bridge mission where you're destroying a- or ACs or MTs on a bridge to defend it, things like that. Th- there is a lot of similar stuff. And like Cheng said, just a little bit more variety and a little bit more care in the missions and maybe less sort of referencing older stuff and just trying new ways to make them more engaging and interesting rather than just sort of go from A to B and shoot everything, maybe have some sort of like interactive element that makes you have to either take a completely different approach to how you're doing the mission or maybe um give you the ability to kind of switch up midway because um i was i forgot it for part of the gameplay section but i remembered uh, a while back recommending uh, another thing to a group of people that we did in a post on the facebook page where it was i, I wanted something where it would be interesting in terms of multiplayer. Uh, it could be comparable to, say, like with Overwatch currently, where you can switch out players on the fly, or switch out characters, sorry. Uh, it would be interesting, at least for me, to be able to see, like, do a mission as maybe a quad leg, and then halfway through the mission, it says, right, you're going to this next part, and it allows you to reconfigure halfway through the mission, you know, to kind of... Uh, get a different style of gameplay in there or you know just be able to be more interactive and switch up on the fly to make things interesting because it it just seems like there are some good elements to sticking as the same ac through an entire mission but if you for instance throw out a completely different uh gameplay style or if you throw out a really hard boss that you need in, say, the second half of a mission, and you're able to switch up to counter that maybe like a second or third time, then I think that would be a pretty interesting addition to it personally, just for the sake of variation. See, the funny thing for me is that they actually did do that with 5th Gen, but the, and, but the thing is it didn't work, and it's actually a very simple <laughs> reason why. Really what was that? I said, I think it's just because the missions weren't long enough or they weren't challenging enough either. Well, well, they're actually fairly long. The problem is, is that it, Armored Core 5 story and to a de- degree Verdict Days still follows the same formula as the older games. You still have destroy the MTs, except they're called ACs right. now. You still have, <laughs> you know, destroy the transport, protect this, protect that. But, you know, almost 20 years into the game now, that formula is pretty stale. I mean... I noticed this more when I was doing some work on the AC Wiki, uh, creating pages, and you know, you look at the description of the mercenaries. It's it's pretty much exactly the same as the ones from the older days. You know, you've got the ones that are like the silent, silent stoic type. They have some specialty in weapons. You know, some of them, some of the descriptions are corny or just straight up untrue when you fight them in the actual mission. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, but but basically, it's it's still the same thing, and that's why it's failing. Especially when you had a new new mechanics, which were, uh, you know, very difficult to work in, very difficult to make um, to make the AI use to be challenging, you know, for the player. And it's it's kind of this 
this being obsolete and just trying again and again to use the same thing, which is causing it to fail. You can't use the same thing over and over again if it's just it's it doesn't hold up anymore. Yeah, it just ends up going stale over time. So what you need to do is kind of figure out a new way to adapt it. Well, it's already gone stale. It's been, you know, 18 years, 15 games. Mm. Yeah, that's a good argument there. So I'm going to leave it to you two. How do we inject some kind of, uh, I, guess, I guess, life into this the sales story experience? I mean, it seems like every mission, you know, is, as you say, archetypical. But, I mean, how do you how do you sort of break out of that? I mean, I feel like everything that could be done has been done. Or at least maybe that's that's how the devs feel. I would say that they need to embrace a slightly different approach to this formula. Now, we've seen pieces of what you could do differently. Um, one thing I'd like to point to is the second disc of Nexus, where it, it gives you a mission, but it also lets you play an opposite side of it. So you could do, you know, for that side, you know, and for the other side. I think one example being some of the Project Phantasma missions where you'd be working for Sumika, and then they would also have you working for the Doomsday Corporation or, yeah, whatever it's called. And I think they need to find a way to make the game less predictable. I would say, for instance, have the ability for an AC to potentially show up in maybe any mission, depending on if you meet certain parameters. Let's say you don't finish a mission soon enough, or maybe you wipe out the entire enemy's forces in you know 15 seconds. I think that way players kind of have to keep on their toes, and you know they have to keep looking over their shoulders, you know. So they don't just bring one very easy AC to a mission, get it done in 15 seconds, and, you know, be over with it. Yeah, that was something that was really awesome, was hunting for the Zodiacs, like trying to complete specific uh, mission requirements, like time frame or AP loss to try to unlock those guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I remember the Zodiac dudes absolutely terrified my friends when I tried to introduce them to Armored Core 5. They were like, holy shit, oh, these guys, they're crazy. Oh, and they were losing to, I think it was Leo. Was Leo the one with the Moonlight? Yep. Yeah, that guy That guy just kept on fucking him up. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> but no, I think you, you make a really good point there. Like, you know, having different, being able to play different sides to the, the story. And on that note, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you guys, factions, corporations, what do we want to see? I'm just trying to think about it now. <laughs> I, honestly, <laughs> I say, I'd say it doesn't matter. It's just, it's a different uh, skin to the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's really just think, a question of execution. We... Venide, yeah, Sirius, Mirage, um, Interior Union. It's just it's it's a matter of how they do it. We I could mean, we could honestly have no corporations. Felt really good. What was that? I said corporate warfare felt really good in four. Yeah, because I think part of that is that they took a different approach approach to story, which I'm gonna I'm gonna call it the Miyazaki touch. All right, give us the Miyazaki touch real quick because we've seen we've seen what Miyazaki has done with Dark Souls recently, and some people are happy about it, some people are upset about it. Do you think maybe the Miyazaki, the Miyazaki approach or the Miyazaki touch will be able to grace Armored Core in a in a, a reasonable fashion? No, no. <laughs> yeah. No. All right, spill the beans. What do you think? I'm gonna be honest here. Miyazaki's style works is because it integrates well with how information is presented in the game. The first thing is that the world is persistent. You are always in it. Even when you press the start button, the game doesn't necessarily pause. If an enemy attacks you, you're gonna get hit. So the way the information is presented is in very small tidbits all around the entire world. You know, and mainly in the form of item descriptions. Sometimes it's in dialogues within characters. And it's kind of the combination of all these together which makes the story and lore of Dark Souls and why it works so well because you don't need to have it presented to you right right in your face you could just take the little pieces if you care for it you can find it and you can listen to it and you can figure out what's going on if you don't give a crap it's okay it's you know you don't have to look for it uh, the problem is with Armored Core's format it doesn't work that well because it it it's not a persistent world for one and the other thing yeah, and the way the information presented is not exactly the same. It's still very much an indirect style. You usually get it through mail or some occasionally through conversation in missions or descriptions in mission dialogue. But it's still the amount of information that's presented to you or information you could possibly find is still significantly less than in the Dark Souls. So I don't think 
it really works with how the current formula works. Yeah, speaking of mail, I remember I was playing um, Last Raven, and towards the end of the game, I just got some random message from Zanadi, and I was like, well, who the fuck is this character? It's Zenaida, mister. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think there's, there's another uh, thing from the community there in which people have said, well, you know, seeing as how Dark Souls is more or less open world you kind of, then it would be totally good if AC was like that, and I'm thinking to myself, no, I don't don't think that would work. <sighs> David, we've I know we've talked about this before, but Armored Core is not an exploration game. Yeah, exactly. You're you're not really looking for stuff. Occasionally hidden parts, but I don't even count that. And it's like I only found two in my entire playthrough of LR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they hit pretty well. It it's it's not easy in that game. But overall, Armored Core is not a game about finding stuff. It's a game about blowing stuff up and customizing your robot, and that's pretty exactly. much it. I mean, I mean, it's like. Go ahead, David. I was I was just about to say whenever I hear it, it just sounds silly to me anyway. Because whenever it's a general thing, whenever you hear open world, the first thing you start thinking of is games like GTA, you know, where it's all ah, persistent and stuff like that. Yeah. And I really <laughs> could not imagine AC being like that, just with you know the mission structure and everything else. It would just not work. Yeah, that would be pretty funky. And then even then, how do we integrate multiplayer? What do we want to see multiplayer-wise? We've sort of gone over story expectations, right? Mm. But, I mean, I think the big key is integrating multiplayer into this. I mean, be it open world or no, like, how do you... Do you just have a separate, like, oh, hey, like, here's the story, and then go online and, and play with your friends, or maybe keep the kind of world mode that we see in 5th uh, Gen? Honestly, I think... It may be a while before we ever see another similar world mode class multiplayer oriented concept just because um, whatever From Software creates, it's probably going to be very much different from what we see in most other games. And unfortunately, what comes with that is um, uh, sometimes innovation is hard to work with. Sometimes it doesn't pan out and sometimes it's not easy to figure out a solution for it. And, you know, that's kind of what we did see with a lot of fifth gen. What I would like to see at bare minimum is um, a lot more control in the ability to uh, run tournaments and basically uh, how to do matchmaking. So Last Raven Portable, I think, is like the only game that has um, it has its own dedicated multiplayer settings. So there's obviously the basics, like you choose your map, you choose um, the time limit and things like that. But there's also a second setting where you can choose which parts you can use. So you can actually ban parts. And this is, it's I think, like, the only game that does it. And it's very, and David, you're gonna, you might have to help me on this because um, I haven't had a chance to play the PS2 version of Last Raven, but assuming you know that it is true, it is the only one that has the ability to do that, which is very weird considering that these games have kind of had a multiplayer oriented uh, you know, setting since around AC2 and from software has been very supportive of it. Yeah, I'm just looking at the um, the portable version now on my Vita, and from what I remember from playing the PS2 version, this was a while back, so you'll have to excuse me if I'm getting it wrong. All of this stuff looks completely different now because they, uh -huh. they have the ability to create lobbies and select new ones, and then choose regulations and choose free match and be able to um verify parts restrictions like you said and I, I honestly don't remember this in the ps2 one but that might have been because they didn't if i'm right about it not being in the ps2 one it might have been because they decided you know well the online we, we just don't want to do it because the ps2 is at, almost at the end of its lifespan right and you know it's these kinds of things i think which uh well one it's it obviously gives us a lot more autonomy because we now can choose how we want to play the game and is, and so if we have parts which are like super strong or broken we can deal with those we don't need the publish you know the publisher or developer to give us a patch we say okay we don't like these parts they're out and so you know basically i'm looking for things that simplify and make it easier on our end to do stuff yeah i don't know i, I feel like balance should start where nothing is you know stupidly broken but i mean i think you're right is sometimes 
leaving it up to the community is just maybe a better way to do it. But well, even then, I think the that FromSoft should probably have an ear to the community. But we know that's not going to happen. At best, we're going to have to go through. No, no. It's um, if if, if anything, it's the opposite. They do have the ear to the community. The questions are which community, and who are they uh, listening yeah. to? Oh, well, yeah. when I say community, I should probably say the West. <laughs> Okay, but which people in the West are they going to listen to? Because, you know, let's just take the patches we got for Verdict Day, for example. They were listening to the Western, uh, sorry, the Japanese community. And, you know, they have a lot of pretty good people, smart people who know a lot about the game. And yet we kind of got the patches we did, which are not um, uh, the most optimal, I'm just going to say. So, you know, this... this... A lot of them are really bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, the question then becomes, how do they get the input from the community? And in what way is it going to be implemented? Yeah, that does seem pretty important. I think, I mean, when it comes to multiplayer, like story, you can kind of leave it on its own. But multiplayer is something that really requires the uh, the developer, the publisher, or whoever's really in charge of that to to keep track of what the hell is going on, you know, and to, to figure out like, hey, what are the community's concerns? Because Multiplayer is only interesting when you have people playing it, and people stop playing it when it's crap. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. <laughs> I think that's about it. From any uh, any new fancy features we're thinking of, or the attraction to multiplayer or single player. Because I mean, I think we've seen it a couple times on the the Emerald Facebook page of people who prefer uh, single player to multiplayer, but. I don't know. Do you think there's a, a specific draw one way or the other? Personally, I'm all in favor of multiplayer only because Armored Core story is usually just total trash. You know, I'm I'm not I'm gonna be obvious here. I have kind of a bias towards multiplayer just because of uh, you know my background in fifth gen, but I do feel that they they do need to orient it a bit more towards it and kind of like I was saying a bit earlier, giving us more options and, you know, simplifying things on our end. But I think that there is a future for single player, but they they really do, like as I mentioned earlier, they need to change it up because right now it's not working out. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of programming and energy as it is right now. It's a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and matchmaking. God damn it from stuff. Fucking give us matchmaking. Oh my god. Like I know I know maybe some of you out there have sat in the multiplayer lobby for fucking hours and not gotten a match. Why can't you just I wanna like hop into I wanna go into free battle. I wanna see how many people are online worldwide, or I guess on my server. I wanna see how many lobbies are open and I wanna be able to queue up so that when a lobby is open I can join it. End of story. Uh, David, you got anything to say? See, th this is the thing with me coming from single player more heavily than you two. I don't have these aches and pains. Man's just the whole thing of, yeah, I want single player to be a, a little bit more interesting, have some twists in it so it's not just the same cookie, uh, cookie cutter style story for each generation, more or less. But... Um, in terms of multiplayer, I, I do agree that, you know, that needs to be changed up. It needs to be more easily accessible in terms of getting into a server and doing it quickly. Um, because you don't want to be sat around in a lobby for hours on end trying to wait for a game. Um, in terms of single player, importance for me is is what's kept me sticking around for AC, really. Because when it, when it comes to story, it, it gives me context. The, the way that I feel about it is it's kind of like... Um, with with playing something like CS that has no story to it, I just play a pickup game on it or something, and literally it's just two people versus each other. That could be, or, you know, like two groups of people. That could be literally any other game, but the thing that makes it for me is how they integrate the universe, how the lore is done, and, you know, just the, the immersion level. Like, for instance, um, going off another game completely, you could literally play uh, Halo multiplayer for ages on end. And sure enough, I've, I've put in plenty of hours on that. But the one thing that gets me more immersed in it than anything else is being able to know and understand more about the universe that you're in, because that kind of gives you this special feeling, you know, as if to be like, okay, I, I properly understand what's going on here. Now, as we've said, AC, it's not all sort of obvious, and it, it's definitely not 
in some cases provided to you in the best ways. But I think if they were able to do it in such a way where, you know, it's not completely sort of in your face, we're doing this because of these reasons, because you have to play in a gray zone with the AC universe. It's, it's always been like that. You, you play the, the gray zone and then you have a choice of two sides and somewhere in between, uh, someone, someone goes genocidal at some point, you know, and then that's the final boss. And that's, that's always been the case, but it, you know, in terms of expanding it and making it better for me personally, I, I would like it if they had some other twist to it, you know, like if there was some other angle instead of just the two sides, like Cheng said, because with with the Nexus disc, even if you're playing the bad side from Phantasma, it's kind of like it's still the same thing playing two corporations against each other or two organizations or two groups. You know, it's it's always the same. And I'd prefer it probably if it wasn't just limited to two and there was some twists in there that kind of made you feel backstabbed or something else, just so it kind of took you back and made you kind of assess where you are in this universe, you know. I think you, you make a really good point there. I think what I'm hearing is the world sort of unites the single player and the multiplayer experience. It gives it context, you know? Yeah. So when you're playing the single player, you're learning about the world. When you go to play the multiplayer, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm in this world. And I, I think I feel the importance of what I'm doing here, I guess. Right? Yeah, basically. Or, or like I'm, I'm, I'm recreating some kind of battle. Like I'm trying to think of what you mean in Halo. Like I'm thinking of... Um, I don't remember the game mode it was, but in Reach, where one side was elites and one side was Spartans, and you'd like try to capture a thing or plant a bomb or whatever. I don't yeah. remember what it was. Well, it's it's kind yeah. of like, uh, like that, yeah. it comes down to games design as well, I think, because when when you play a game, ultimately, what gives me the the ultimate sense of immersion is just being able to kind of take in the surroundings and depending on how well the story is done as well, it seems more believable. So eventually you end up being like, oh, okay, this is cool. I'm here. I'm doing this. And if you don't nail that, then you don't feel the importance. You don't feel like you're actually there, you know? So if the immersion isn't there, then it could literally be any other game where it's just a, a group of people fighting another group of people. The only difference is we have giant robots. You know, I think I know what you mean there. Like when you look at um, like fourth and fifth gen multiplayer wise, and I guess I guess really all armored core games except for when there's co-op, um, it's literally like you go into a separate sort of zone and boot up your multiplayer and you just like sort of fight people out of context. Yeah, Unless it's like world mode, I guess. But I'm I'm especially thinking fourth gen where it's like multiplayer is just like okay, go here, fight this guy. You know, like there's. There's no context to it. It's like, oh, I'm I'm just fighting friends, you know. It's it's just another, like as you say, just groups of people fighting other groups of people. There's not really like a context to it. Like you're not fighting over anything. You're just like, oh, let's do a thing. I don't know, Chang. What do you think, or David? If you got a, a follow up to that? No, I think uh, David hit most of it pretty spot on. I would quite agree. <laughs> All right. Do we want to wrap this up and maybe get on in the community? I will take our moment of silence as a yes. <laughs> I, I keep on like waiting. To... Go ahead, yeah. I, I keep on waiting to see if anyone else chimes in first. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling. Who wants to do community roundup? Cheng, I think I heard you volunteer. <laughs> yeah, I volunteered. <laughs> so uh, let's talk a little bit about community now. So for those who haven't been around here so long i'm just going to start around fourth gen so fourth gen is right around the time that the community is that's where you see the biggest divide between the old players of third gen and backwards and the the new players of fourth gen and this is where you see a fracture in the community and during this time uh, a lot of ac players disappear there's a lot of uh, confrontation and arguments between the various generations and little by little right around the time of uh, when 5 came out, the community was pretty split up. There were very few sites where Armored Core was active. There was uh, Armored Core Garage. There was Armored Core Online before it became Mechaverse. There was Raven's Havens, and, there, and then some degree ACU, and then also Raven Republic. And then by the time we've come to Verdict Day, which is about four or five years later, 
um, you kind of just see the community decentralize more and more. Now, very few people are on any of the sites. Um, my own site, AC Legacy included, and a few other ones that appear during the time, like Reaching Perfection. And it's almost as if they all disappeared. You see some of them on the Facebook page, a few on the Reddit, some on Twitter, some on the random Skype and Discord groups. But overall, the community is pretty much gone. You can't find one place where you'll see a whole bunch of people nowadays. And it's kind of weird because it means that the concept of community and the people who make it up has changed significantly. Recently, we've seen, maybe in the past four or five years, maybe longer, uh, kind of a split between what some people would call the casuals and then the hardcores. Um you know, people who play the game very much in depth go all for the stats. And then the other people who kind of have an interest in Armored Core but never were really there when the game was active. Maybe they picked up the game, uh, you know, after the scene had died. Maybe it was they didn't have internet at the time. Well, but for whatever, whatever the reason, uh, there just seems to be this divide. And sometimes these guys butt heads all the time because... They don't agree on certain topics. They don't agree on which games they like. And sometimes it's just getting petty arguments. And I think um, this is something that we've all seen to some degree or another. I know uh, David might have some more insight into this, especially since, you know, uh, we look over the Facebook group. If I could interject really quick, I think with the the thing with the, the, the casual versus competitive mindset is I feel like... Um, when you play the game competitively and you realize that there's uh, such a casual audience uh, as well as your, your competitive buddies and you, you sort of realize what kind of power you hold over these people and that you can just trance them with little, no effort. I think that really just breeds elitism. And so in these arguments, when you're saying where, you know, that people get into disagreements, I think there's a lot of ergo decido where it's basically people saying, well, you're not good at the game. So shut up, you know, it's, it's kind of funny to me because these not only are these arguments pretty meaningless, but they're also some of the most destructive. Because uh, one of the yeah, things exactly. I saw, yeah, yeah, like I think, um, I think David has a lot to say about that. He's witnessed all these things, Mister Moody, David. Uh, oh, yeah. well, our generous, our generous administrator mod. I uh, I don't particularly like drama, as everyone knows on the forums, and I uh, I have had to be a bit sort of more harsh recently, but. Um, Calling on a little bit of a further back experience, just to kind of give an idea of how elitism and that kind of stuff doesn't work. I uh, I referenced it in one of the more recent posts that's now gone, thank God. Um, uh, I uh, I saw this kind of elitism happen in the, the Halo modding community, where it was literally kind of people coming on and they were you know kind of starry eyed and wanting to make maps for Halo's community to keep it alive, and. Uh, it was literally always the same starter post of, oh, look, I made a box in 3DS Max and now I've put the character in it and it looks awesome and I can walk around and it's like, okay, someone's really happy, they're really excited. And sure enough, you know, with a bit more learning and potential and time, you know, th there's something good that will come of that. And of course, then you had people that were claiming to be from the actual video games industry themselves, literally just shitting on them and being like, look, we don't give a fuck. If you can't post anything that's decent or has more time put into it, then you might as well just quit now. You know, and it destroyed a lot of people in terms of like being able to get more maps done now. Surely enough, over time, the Halo community has changed significantly to the point where it can survive. It's it's only just hanging on. Um, and sure enough, new people are coming in and learning it, but there's not as many as there used to be. And that's purely because of elitism. And that's kind of why I take uh, a very harsh sort of way to moderating the, the Facebook page. Because when, when you've seen something like this happen and it's killed a community that you're enjoying, you, you really don't like seeing the same thing repeat. And that's, that's one thing that I see with you know, certain players and certain groups where they, they tend to think, oh, because I'm better at AC, that automatically makes me the, the center of attention or the, the best person on this, this Facebook page. So you've got to listen to me and anyone else, you know, you can just bugger off basically. And then when I tell them off, which is, 
it's one of those rare things. We try letting things slide most of the time, but when you actually tell someone off for it most of the time, it's kind of like, oh, it was just a joke, it was just a joke. But the problem with text speech uh, is it's not like we're doing now with the podcast. You can't tell somebody's emotions or you know the connotation behind what they're actually uh, trying to say. Instead, it's just text. So you're automatically assuming that because someone's basically saying, oh, I'm amazing, you should get good or, or don't bother, you know, immediately it comes across as condescending, elitist. And to anyone else, you know, it would put them off playing. It, it's like uh, another, and my final example was the other night I was playing a, a pickup game on Overwatch and uh, I'm, I'm not really good at competitive at the moment. I'm learning how to do it. And I, I messed up badly on one mission, and it wasn't all my fault. It was just a couple of other people were pretty bad, and I got singled out because I, I messed up one ultimate timing. And immediately this guy's just like, go fuck yourself. You should just quit and stop playing altogether now because you're shit. And I'm like, wait, what? You know? And I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, I, I really am considering just co quitting competitive here, not because I'm... Um, not sort of up to people calling me out about it, but I'm I'm just I just want fun, and I'm not in the mood for somebody you know treating me like that. So it, it's not really fair to new people or casual players for someone to just kind of shout them down and be like, get good or fuck off. You know, it's just like, who are you to say that? You know, you have the right to say that to someone. Actually, coming from the other side here, like I remember, I've had a couple of cases in in Armor Core Five. Um, where, like, we'd be in a team free battle. Uh, team free battles really don't happen a lot, at least on the Xbox server um, in Verdict Day. But they were the only thing they were. They were the only thing you did in um, in uh, Armored Core Five. And I had times where I'd say, like, "Okay, guys, like, I, I know this is free battle, but like, I want to win. So please don't be idiots. Like, I want you to like get on my ass and stay there. You know, don't fucking run ahead and die or whatever." And I, I think maybe that's the 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 opposite end of the situation that you're sort of talking about, uh, David, where you're like, you know, I, I just I'm just here to have fun. But I mean, for some people, fun is a different different sort of thing. Yeah. And it's, maybe it's hard to really like mitigate that and allow both sides to have fun. It might be hard trying to mix competitive and casual gameplay together because I I find that with uh, a group of friends that I play with, where I'll be I'll be the same. I'll be like, look, I really want to win because I don't enjoy losing, but I'll try not like completely having a go at, at the people that I'm playing with. And they'll just be like, well, you know, you just have fun with it. And I'm like, no, I really can't enjoy it without winning. But at the same time, I suppose that's passion coming through. But like I said, again, it's because they can hear me over a microphone that they know that I'm not really sort of being aggressive or properly angry against them. It's just more frustration in terms of me seeing things that they don't see in terms of gameplay and uh, opportunities and then when people don't take them obviously you get annoyed you know so it's it's really kind of hard to balance out the competitive and the casual at least i mean if, if we were to go back to the 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 way that the gameplay is done for multiplayer the only real way you could um in some way mitigate that is by literally having two playlists for you know competitive and casual yeah but then that divides the community player base exactly i think we pretty well exhausted that topic yeah do you have anything more to say or no it's really no hard. i would say right, so. oh go ahead so, kind of just leading on to that i this has created some very unique problems in the community uh, the it's big one fucking rifts if you want to say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, you know what I mean. But um, the biggest problem is content creation, because you you guys have noticed this as well. But there's almost no content being created by either of these groups, not the casuals or the hardcores. You have some occasional stuff. You have Buster TBM. You have Limit Release by Dave. But overall, there's very little going on in this community. You know, you don't see a lot of stuff. It's very, most of the stuff you do see, it's three or four years old, or sometimes even longer, sometimes up to 10 years old. And, you know, this represents a problem with us because we already have this, a lot of this internal conflict. And now we have an issue with getting more people to join the scene because we really have nothing going on. 
I, I do think this is one of the reasons why a lot of the forums and the social media sites and this, you know, all the various get togethers for Armored Core have died down is because, yeah, you've got people, you know, all together, uh, but they're not really doing anything. If you're lucky, they're maybe at the bare minimum playing the game, but other than that, they're just talking. And at some point or another, that doesn't really, that's not really interesting. You know, you can only talk about stuff for so long before, you know, you have to either go out and do something or you just kind of drop out because, you know, what's the point? It's not very interesting anymore. And I think another thing is um, with the content creation is that a lot of uh, the Armored Core fans are really getting older now. And, you know, we've got jobs, we've got lives and families and stuff. And it's it's hard to even find time to play the game. <laughs> And of course, the other argument is, well, people aren't, you know, on the forums or making stuff because they're busy playing the game or whatever, or people are always talking so much. If only they would just play the game instead of talking. You know, there's two sides of that coin or whatever. I yeah, I don't really believe that because if it was really a question of people not playing the game enough or playing the game too much, we wouldn't we we wouldn't have half this problem. But we all know there's not enough people playing the game and there's not enough people talking about the game. So clearly, there's something going on there because we're not even hitting the bare minimum. Yeah, that it, seems about right. It's it's why I support all the the content creation very heavily when it comes up on the the Facebook page, whether it be like let's plays or something else like that. Whenever someone posts it up, I'm immediately in them posting likes and good comments, and I'm I'm taking my time out to actually watch these things that are being created because I feel like you know if I didn't do that, it'd be offensive to the people that spend the time doing that. You know, I think that's like exactly what you say. There is like you know people. People like want their content to be viewed, and when it's not, then they're like, "Well, why am I producing Armored Core content?" I've seen that with at least six um, six Armored Core YouTube channels that have been like, "Oh my god, I love this game. I play it all the time, but nobody watches these vids, so I'm gonna upload different stuff like Monster Hunter or like, yeah. Lost Planet, or you know." Well, it's like uh, at the moment. Uh, like we were saying, Buster's stuff is really good. Uh, we have a couple of other people that do Let's Plays. I think Elliot is one of them that's very active on the, the Facebook page and posts up uh, AC3 stuff at the moment. He's been going through all of them. Um, There's also couple... um, Dragon F91 who does uh, the first person stuff where he actually created that whole simulated cockpit oh, that's almost. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's the, really uh, cool. The simulator with the projector. I think he said he was trying to get HTC Vive in there as well to do like that's virtual so reality cool. stuff. He's uh he's not posted stuff recently, but that's because he's been busy trying to sort out money and stuff like that. Because I mm -hmm. checked his page just the other day. But yeah, it's one of those things where it, when people are creating the content, it. I mean, for me, I, I couldn't care <laughs> with, with what I'm doing. I, ju I just do it. If somebody watches it, then they watch it. You know, if they don't, they don't. But for anyone else, especially uh, like the Let's Plays and things, I, I take my time out to watch those because there's a lot of personal stories in there from people that have enjoyed them. And, you know, if they go into details like, oh, I used to play this when I was younger, when I was sat at home and this happened and this happened. I like hearing about those stories at the same time because it makes it all the more interesting. You know, it's it's not just the, the difference in gameplay. It's the actual person themselves that I'm interested in. I don't know if anyone else will be like that, but yeah, I, mean I, that. I just like that just for not just the actual person's story, but as a, a little mark of respect, you know, if you're taking the time out to do something like that and you're enjoying finding out about the person, then it, it, just giving them the, the sort of support is at least a little bit of respect that they kind of need because when you look at YouTube and the comment system for every other video on the site, it's complete toxic, you know? So it's it's right. kind of like it's kind of like you're doing your own community support by actively you know going watching the videos commenting even if you know you skip to certain parts in the video because you might think well okay i don't want to watch this or i don't have enough time if you just skip the key points like boss battles or whatever and then leave a comment on that it's it's still enough you know for to keep someone creating content i mean like i was saying with me it's totally different with me because I've, I've set myself on a path and i have to follow it to its yeah. you know to its end i don't have a choice whether whether it be me just thinking well i've been paid for this this is technically my job or just my nature of being like i've started something i'm going to finish it you know 
it's it's completely different for me but for anyone else it's it's important that you support them because otherwise then you end up with le even less content than we have now and th there probably are more creative people out there but i just don't think they're taking the initiative and it, it's not the whole thing of we're attention seeking we're just doing something for the sake of seeing what you know what people actually enjoy and then creating more of it because we enjoy creating stuff and people enjoy you know turning around and going oh that's cool at the end of the day do you mind making more of that you know yeah yeah the encouragement you know and i think it's... i mean go ahead david i was just going to finish off by saying the i mean like with limit release the the first one 14 minutes you know and i look back at it now and i'm like uh i left errors in it but how the hell did i i even you know leave those errors in there in the first place and again with the animations being a bit bad because i haven't animated anything in ages since you know college and then i did that obviously the animation's a bit bad but i i honestly was i've i've put it in a post somewhere on the internet I, that was supposed to be my very last uh, uh project that i used someone else's ip for and the only reason i ever came back to do the movie is because there were that many people in the comments saying look we want another one from you i, I felt yeah. like i kind of left people out on you know without really providing decent content so after looking at it that way that's why i came back was because so many people were like no we're genuinely interested in this we want to see more you know and it's and for me it's kind of sad because this is the kind of support we really do need the most even if it's you know just from the people inside of it and it kind of calls into question you know what kind of community are we we're playing a hardcore game where people are split between the casual and not so casual <sighs> We don't really support our own people, and you know, who are we? If I was going to be really blunt, I'd say just a lazy community that just wants everything to end with a shotgun, really. Because <laughs> <laughs> when you think about it, like you, you said, the we don't support each other, or hardly do, apart from the the little bit of encouragement I'm trying to give everyone now, uh, and the odd bit of work that I've done to say, like, look, I can. I can show you how to rip these models, do it if you want to do something like this. But apart from that, we're not really supportive. The The hardcore is is more or less turning off the, the casual players quite a lot. So the only way this community can go at the moment that I see is down. Well, it's always been going down, so... Yeah. No, but really fast. <laughs> faster, basically. <laughs> faster! Gotta go yeah. faster. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, amen to that, I guess. Well, do we want to talk about the hangout spots and sort of the 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 what is called the the fracturedness of the community decentralization that's gone on? I think we already touched on those earlier. Where you know we got people on Facebook, we got people on Twitter. There's forums, there's Discords, there's Skype chats. Um, the... I mean, if you guys have anything to say about that, and then I have one more thing to say on that issue, actually, or, or I guess an issue that comes up with um the why everything's so sort of so splintered and decentralized. But I'll let you two have a word quick. Go for okay, it, David. And, uh, I was just about to finish off by saying, you know, I, I made everything sound really bleak in terms of like, <laughs> oh, we've got no support. You might as well just shotgun us. End it all now. The, the one thing that I've seen that is kind of hopeful is that we do have places like, um, I, I sometimes frequent 4chan quite a bit. And... The the video game section on there actually didn't know that we had the Discord, we had the Facebook page, that we still had an active PS3 community. They were literally just like, wait, what? The, the Xbox 360 is dead, so there's nothing left, you know, there's no websites or anything. So that does show that there are people that still want to play the games, that do enjoy it and are actively trying to find places. It's just the case of how easy it is to find them and putting all... The, the different ways in which you can interact with the community in different parts of it and play games, making sure you put that information out there so that people understand, you know, that it's it's still going. It might be, you know, chugging along at a slow pace, but it's still there and it's still active, which is the most important part if you want to keep anything going. Yeah, that's basically it, really. You got you to gotta start the fire and keep it going, really, while we still have embers. Shit's lit. <laughs> it's lit. Ah!
<laughs> he was waiting for that joke, I bet. All right. Anything more to say on that? I guess not. All right, so we're going to say something about the, um, you know, all the, all the different hangout spots where people try to get. Um, I was actually going to bring up an issue that I see with um, these little hangout spots, like, uh, you know, Facebook, Twitter, and forums, et cetera, is that people, people will flock to them up until certain people enter that little community. And then it's the, the, the existence of some troublemakers, so to speak, that really like stops people from, from having any kind of activity. And of course, I, like, we're not going to name any names here or anything like that. And no. maybe I probably shouldn't even talk about this, but like, I mean, have you, have you, I think we all kind of know what we're talking about here when we're, when I say like, you know, it, it is lit until like you get a certain crowd that props in and then people just are completely disinterested in, you know, in having their discussions. Like, do you think there's anything we can do about those kinds of people? Um, because they're unavoidable is what I'm saying. I mean, the first thing, obviously, is to ask the person to stop being a piece of shit. Uh, that's number one. <laughs> but I think... I noticed this with a few other people, is that because we're a community that's so very weak and it's we're very split up, there's no the way... The other issue is that we're, there's so few of us and we're so close. Every you know Everybody knows each other. And... Like, if there's a disagreement, it's immediately personal, you know? Yeah. There's that, too. But I think the big thing is that we we don't really have a good way to really stop or block the problematic people. If you think about it, any person who's been a problem in this community, they've always come back one way or another, whether it be in the forum or in the game, you know, using an alternate account, pretending to be someone else, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. We have not developed an efficient method of stopping people from coming back once we kick them out. And the problem is, is we keep feeding them. We keep giving them attention. We keep calling them names, which they don't care for. And in fact, they kind of enjoy it because they know they're annoying us. And the thing is, you have to understand with these people, you have to cut them off. And we do a terrible job at that. Terrible job. <laughs> Seems accurate. Moody, do you have anything to say about that? Uh, Forum-wise, I just feel powerless sometimes. I mean, I, I only just recently banned someone for the first time, and that was uh, that was something I did not want to do. Now, everyone else who's probably listening has seen that entire debacle, you know, the, the stuff that went on, but oh boy. I, it, it's just one of those where I uh, if I had my way, everything would be sorted you know we'd probably have gotten rid of the people sooner but you know it, it's one of those things where you want to give people at least a second chance you know but i can't keep giving people second and third and fourth chances it's just a case of people actually remembering that there is a right and a wrong and if you're going to be a complete idiot then of course the community is going to respond to you in a certain manner it's like i said before the the whole connotation with um, being able to tell inflictions in people's voices and whether they're joking or not, that that for me is really important. And it seems like a lot of the community has been very vocal about it recent, of the past couple of months with it as well. Because um, in terms of moderating, before when when me and Chang weren't part of the, the moderating and admin team, um, what happened was there just used to be a, an absolute ton of random crap posts and porn posts and other stuff and it, it was ridiculously awkward to look at you know you'd try and make sense of it all and there'd be a load of spam from like one person or there'd be like i said the odd porn post which just is not needed you know so that's that's why we kind of ended up stepping in because we, we literally pleaded to the the people that own the facebook page and just said look we we want in to keep some sort of organization and sure enough i'm gonna put my hand up and say at times, I can be really, really damn strict just for the sake of trying to keep order. And, you know, at those times, it makes me look like the bad guy. But I'm always thinking of the general, you know, users. I mean, it, the worst part is with me being so strict recently, some people were like, am I allowed to post this? You know, I'm, I'm not so sure. And I don't think I should have gone 
so hard on everyone, but it, it's just one of those things where you see these posts repeatedly coming up where it's just crap and you're thinking, oh, I'll just delete it. But then someone says something along the lines of, oh, you've deleted it. You don't have the right to do that. You're a Nazi or something. And I'm thinking, this is the last thing I want to be listening to. You're meant to be a community. Right, right, of course, yeah. you know. It's, it's, it's like, like you, you've devoted your, your time and energy into this, and then people are calling you a Nazi, right? You're like, like why? <laughs> well, I, I could care less about what names I'm called. It's just the nonsensicalness of it. You know, you're trying to keep some sort of... of organization and some sort of control of how things are done and then somebody turns around and says to you basically that that what you're doing the the way that you're organizing things is is completely shit you know and it's like well uh, what right, right. <laughs> actually i think on that note like it's it's about getting like a, a place where you can like have a discussion and i mean like not not like a safe space you know but one where like you can actually hold up like an intelligent conversation and have it ongoing and have people recognize like what's true and what's false. I think maybe maybe Chang has a little bit of experience in this uh, alongside myself with um, you know foreign activity. Is uh, you'll have someone who will like post something and it'll be wrong, and people will swoop in to correct them. Yeah. But the the issue is like the the way in which that is done isn't like off putting to the po the original poster. You know, because then you, you have you have people who are they're afraid to post because they're afraid of being wrong, and you have people who are afraid to post uh, replies to posts because they're they're afraid to comment on a thread uh, to say something's wrong because they're afraid of being called like a you know an elitist or something and getting banned. Yeah, you know, it's a it's a fine line in making kind of like a a space where you can have like a a conversation like that, and I think that's why we don't see a whole lot of competitive discussion because um, anybody who I mean, I mean, anybody who already knows isn't going to post, and anybody who's curious either isn't going to post because they're going to get pounced on, or isn't going to get replies because people are like, "I don't want to, I don't want to have to deal with this again." You know, I think that's yeah. why forums really died out as sort of you know modes of conducting discussion. And we see Twitter, and we have Facebook, and we have that new Ask FM, which is really fun to use. Um, speaking with Spam Chang, he loves it. Yes, please, please, <laughs> please. <laughs> please, spam chain. But uh, we see those sort of crop up a little bit more because it's, I guess it's, a less, it's less moderated and you can kind of get away with saying whatever you want in some cases because it's you know, partially anonymous or there's enough people that you can just sort of do whatever. But then you have really just unintelligent dribble, at least sometimes what I see on the Facebook page, of people who are just like talking shit like for no reason. I'm like, okay, well, I guess this could have been an interesting discussion. But, I mean, you know, <laughs> well, we uh, we took on I think it was one new admin and two new mods recently because of uh, you know people saying, well, you know, just how many admins are there and stuff like that. And I just thought, well, you, you know, we need more. So uh, we went and looked for people that we knew we could trust with things that weren't going to be you know heavy-handed or anything. So it's it's, it's kind of helped, but. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where face, Facebook moderation is always going to be awkward because it, if not for the the simple fact of people are very opinionated, right? I mean, I think that's the other thing is like getting getting decent moderation teams on board because it's great when you're adding on, you know, just here and there. But then when when there's like a call for mods, I think people don't fully vet them. I mean, as we could see with. Um, I guess the failed state of uh, Mechaverse back in the day, and as well as um, ACL, they had a little bit of drama there. But this is a drama-free podcast, so we will not go into it too deeply. Yeah, I, but, um, I like to explain it like this: uh, being a mod is like holding a wolf or a tiger by the ear. You don't want to hold on, but at the same time, you can't let go. <laughs> that seems pretty accurate, actually. So I mean, it's kind it's, of it's like, like you you've you've been given power, you've been trusted with this the responsibility, but there are people who who seek the the moderation role so that they can you know they can help out their buddies or they can you know do what they want with impunity, instead of actually you know trying to trying to you know hold on to the tiger. Well, what I'm more getting into is, <clears throat> even if you do your job well, people will hate you. If you do your job poorly, right. you'll, people will still hate you. But no matter what, you're still going to be hated because, you know, people are very opinionated and they don't always see eye to eye with how you do things. So no matter what, um, you always lose. Yeah. Uh, 
that's why I think that we've had so few really good or effective admins or mods over the years. It's just, it's a hard position to be in without it just sort of eating at you until you do become, you know, bad, corrupt, whatever, whatever. Well, remarks complete on this aspect, or how do we feel? I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I think we're done for today, guys, unless we can think of anything else to, to talk about. Ask me questions I mean, well, on... We've got over damn near everything. Yeah. Ask me questions on ask.fm slash from Cheng or something. I'll put a link. Spam the shit out of him. I'm not yeah. even joking. <laughs> Come on. And spam me while you're at it, unless it's like stupid questions that I totally want to answer them. Ask.fm um, slash sash perennial in the description yeah, or go. something. Something like that. We'll figure out what we're doing with this later. I don't know. Shit's um, lit. Let's see. And and yeah, shit's lit. <laughs> and um, Dom sadly couldn't be with us. Um, Sparking, Fate, whatever you want to call him. Uh, check out his streams. He had a really awesome close run recently. Uh, and I think that's something that's really cool about content creation is that when you get people in the community who have been there for a while and what they do, and there's like like a kind of history. And so you get into the, the sort of the drama of like, can I get my best time? Can I get this world record run? Or, oh, no, I dropped it. Um, and I guess now that we're talking about content creation, I should probably really get up off my ass. Um, yes. Plug in the, the AC Discord real quick, actually. Um, we have a lot of great people there. Um, fun discussion topics. Uh, great place to just hang out with Armored Core players, even if you don't want to talk about Armored Core. Um, let's see. We're also trying to put together a like a ring of streamers uh, using the Discord to just get people into like a, like a... Not really a podcast full-on, but a a kind of talk show setting where people will play a game and there will just be people discussing it and you know chatting about what's good, what's going on. And also, I guess I should be rebooting my uh, Alaya playthrough and go through the, the second time for Orca Path and uh, Destruction Ending. So I guess keep an eye, uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, enough shameless plugs from Chang. Uh, Moody, David, anything else to say? Not really. <laughs> We're done. We're done. All right, that's it, guys. We're done. <laughs>